Good morning, NALC. Uh, thank you to President Rolando for inviting me to speak and participate in your convention. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to approach this as an audition with the hopes that you invite me back two years in, a, in Hawaii. You know, no pressure, but you know, we'll, we'll see what I can do. Uh, I also want to thank Executive Vice President Brian Renfro, who serves on the uh, board of our organization, uh, and President Rolando's Chief of Staff, Jim Sauber, who works with us on our activities. Most importantly, I want to thank all the delegates in the room and your brothers and sisters who couldn't be here today. Thank you for all of your hard work. That video was incredibly emotional, and the community involvement you guys have is outstanding. Please give yourself a round of applause. Uh, thank you to the ridiculously long elevator lines. I've been able to get to know a few of you over the past few hours and last night. Um, and I'm really, I'm really touched at, at how enthusiastic all the participants are. Um, you know, I think it, it bodes well for a, a good uh, convention. Anyway, I'm here today to get you all fired up about voting. Our most fundamental right as citizens of this great country more specifically, I'm here to talk to you about how you, the letter carriers of America, the carriers of democracy, can help make the United States a stronger, more representative democracy by leading us to a system where more people participate. As President Rolando indicated, I'm here as a volunteer to represent the National Vote at Home Institute. Our organization exists to educate and advocate for the expansion of vote by mail what we call vote at home um, around the country. We support policies in all 50 states to give the U.S. Postal Service and its many dedicated employees a central and starring role in the effort to improve the accessibility, security, and integrity of our elections. These policies already exist in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington, where your members, yep, where your members and our U.S. Postal Service have been at the forefront of creating a model for how elections everywhere should run. Some of you from Colorado, Washington, Oregon are probably familiar with them. But here's how it works. In those three states, ballots are automatically delivered by you to every registered voter for every election. Whether they know, thank you, whether they know the election is even happening, Voters then get to take the time on their own schedules, usually at their kitchen and dining room tables, to research the ballots top to bottom. Then, the choice is up to them on how to return the ballots, either through the mail or by dropping it off at one of many drop boxes and vote centers in their cities and counties. Here's the key, on their own time. Now, let me be clear, this is not absentee ballots on steroids. Quite the opposite, in fact. Absentee ballots are an opt-in system. You have to proactively apply in order to receive one. Oftentimes, voters have to prove to the state some ridiculous thing to get one, like they're not going to be in the precinct on Election Day in three months. Who knows their schedule that well? A true vote-at-home system takes an opt-out approach. You don't need to do anything to get your ballot, other than being registered. And if you want to recycle your ballot or throw it away, fine. But it gives you the option, with your ballot, to vote from home or anywhere you choose, actually. Vote at home hedges against bad weather, sick kids, an unexpected bit of forced overtime, and allows you to vote whenever you want to. It's a paradigm shift, to be sure. It's now government's job to get you your ballots, even if the key ingredient, the mailed out ballot, is one that has been hidden in plain sight since 1864. That's when supporters of Abraham Lincoln created the absentee ballot to make sure that soldiers wouldn't be disenfranchised while fighting to win the Civil War. The message is clear to government. Don't tell me when and where I can vote, or even if I can vote. Just give me my ballot my democratic ticket, brought to you by the wonderful men and women of the National Association of Letter Carriers. Thank you. And let me do with it 
what I want. Now, we recognize that there are some of us who are a bit sentimental uh, or even stubborn in wanting to vote in brick and mortar poll places. Fine, you actually still can by dropping off your marked ballot in person at a drop site or vote center on election day. There are some who say this increases voter fraud. We would beg to differ. Hundreds of millions of ballots have now been cast in the three voted home states without a whiff of any fraud or mischief. Additionally, as a safeguard to fraud, every voter must sign the outer envelope in which the ballot is returned and every signature is verified against the reg registration rules. There are some who want to politicize this, say it helps a particular block of voters of the, over the other. Nonsense. This is a pre-partisan issue, one that transcends politics. A democracy where more people participate is a good thing, right? Let me be clear, the status quo is not working. We've got some of the worst turnout of, adv of advanced democracies around the world. The system of vote at home, on the other hand, holds government more accountable to the will of a larger portion of the electorate. It's also safer and more cost efficient. Who doesn't want that? I want to give you a few quick numbers that support the notion that voter turnout increases often dramatically when people vote at home. Turnout in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington in the 2014 midterms was 17 points higher than the rest of the country. 17 points. In those same 2014 midterms, and this stat applies to voters in all 50 states, those who had a ballot in their hand at home before Election Day voted at a rate of 75 to 80 percent. Those who didn't and who had to go to the polls typically had a 45 to 50 percent rate of casting a ballot, almost two to one. NALC is a founding member of our coalition. In fact, we held our kickoff event at your headquarters in D.C. last October. Our coalition is trying to make vote by mail and vote at home a reality in more states. And while it will likely take a few years of lobbying our state legislatures and perhaps filing a few uh, ballot initiatives, I know we can make it happen. And all of you and letter carriers everywhere can help. Already, your leadership has been incredibly supportive of our efforts as has a larger AFL-CIO. You're, you're gonna hear from President Trumpka here in a few minutes. But more unions need to get in on this and make it a priority. We need your help to organize around this issue and make it more of a household issue. There's absolutely no reason that only voters in those three states, Colorado, Washington, and Oregon, should be able to take advantage of such a voter-centric policy. It should be everywhere. You can, thank you. Uh, you can start by visiting our website, voteathome.org. I believe it's up on the screens right now. And by signing up for our electronic newsletter. Following the lead of your NALC legislative and political organizers and your state associations, you can join our campaigns in many states. We expect to be active in virtually all non-voted-home states between now and 2020. And next year, once all the IRS nonprofit paperwork is done, you can support our efforts to promote Vote at Home financially by giving a little bit each year or each pay period to the combined federal campaign to support the National Vote at Home Institute. If everyone in this room gave one dollar, we would have a real war chest for democracy. To conclude, the Postal Service is already essential to our elections. Everyone here knows that. In 2016, between states that have Vote at Home and those that don't, and absentee voting, more than 33 million American citizens cast ballots delivered by America's letter carriers. Working together, we can make the number grow, increase turnout, and strengthen our democracy. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to the brothers and sisters for all the hard work that you do. Uh, thank you to the National Association of Letter Carriers for having me today. Hope to see you in Hawaii. Thank you.